I do care what you do with this information because it is important to our survival as a species. It's important to our planet. It is important for the world. Where there is a division has to do with the United Nations. Uh, you know, there are a number of countries that, just as a matter of principle, believe that if military action is to be taken, it needs to go through the UN Security Council. There are others, and I put myself in this camp, as somebody who is a strong supporter of the United Nations, who very much appreciates the courage of the investigators who have uh, gone in and looks forward to seeing the UN uh, report, because I think we should try to get more information, not less, in this situation. Uh, it is my view and a view that was shared by a number of people in the room that given uh, Security Council paralysis on this issue, if we are serious about upholding a ban on chemical weapons use, then an international response is required and that will not come through Security Council action. Uh, and that's where I think the division comes from. Uh, and I respect those who uh, are concerned about setting precedents of action outside of uh, a UN Security Council resolution. Uh, I would greatly prefer working through multilateral channels and through the United Nations to get this done. But ultimately, what I believe in even more deeply, because I think that the security of the world and my particular task, looking out for the national security of the United States, requires that when there's a breach this brazen of a norm this important and the international community is paralyzed and frozen and doesn't act, um, then that norm begins to unravel. And if that norm unravels, then uh, other norms and prohibitions start unraveling. And that makes for a more dangerous world. Why isn't the United States doing something about this, the, the most powerful nation on Earth? Why, why are you allowing these terrible things to happen? And then, if the international community turns around, when we're saying it's time to take some responsibility and says, well, hold on a second. We're not sure. Yet that erodes our ability to maintain the kind of norms that, that we're looking at. This is Dabu 7, and we have a second round false flag attack taking place inside of Syria. This is what we said to watch for. This is what we pretty much expected to happen. They need an excuse. And Al Arabiya is saying to Bloomberg initially that rebels came to them saying that there was an explosion, that Assad did it, his military is to blame, and that there was chemicals, some kind of poisonous gases. Now, you can look at all the headlines. They're going to say the same thing. The Syrian government is who they're trying to blame here. Shelled a city of innocent people while the whole world is sitting here staring at them um, you know, they're being accused of the first attack. You think that actually he's going to sit here and shell innocent people for no reason? I do not think so. It's kind of obvious to me that these rebels go running back and they're the ones with the story. Uh, at first, this wasn't confirmed, but like I said before, uh, they cited an unnamed rebel group. So just a group of rebels got the story and ran up, and that's where the story has come from. And as you can see here, people were questioning if the headline even existed in Bloomberg. Yes, it did. It's right here. They scrubbed it. And for whatever reason that may be, but they did. They scrubbed it. And here's the proof. Here's a screenshot. I'll leave links as always. But as of right now, the most recent updates are saying that there are many casualties in the area and some sort of poison or chemical had been used again. 
And once again, they're saying that this came from unnamed rebel sources. This is kind of obvious, folks, that this attack was done by the rebels. And once again, it's going to prove the same. Uh, there's no way that it's Assad's done this at this point. There's no way. There's no need to kill innocent people for no reason. They're saying that this is chlorine gas that was used in the attack. Now, they know this rather quickly here. Um, you know, the UN had to come and do all this testing and the, for the first time, but now they're saying that this is chlorine gas, and it can uh, the damage the tissues in the body because the acid, when it hits, I guess, moisture, it can cause a lot of damage. Lung damage, eye damage, throat, lungs. Uh, that's what, what can occur. So, there you guys go. I wanted to give you the heads up. Second round, false flag. Don't believe the mainstream BS and lies on this. This is 100% hoax. Uh, I'm going to say people probably did get hit and killed here and hurt, but this was not Assad. I'll leave links as always. Eyes open. Now, is it possible that uh, Assad doubles down uh, in the face of uh, our action and uses chemical weapons more widely? Uh, I suppose anything's possible, uh, but it wouldn't be wise. Uh, I think that at that point, mobilizing the international community would be easier, not harder. Uh, I think it'd be pretty hard for uh, the UN Security Council at that point to continue to resist uh, the requirement for action and we would gladly join with uh, an international coalition to make sure that it stops.